if you've got an Infinity QX80 like this one, and your alternator isn't charging your battery correctly, check out this video as I explain the variable voltage control system, which might be your problem. I'll also describe the solution on how to fix that easy and at no cost. Many Infinity vehicles charging system doesn't work as a conventional alternator to battery charging uh, scheme. Typically a car would, after a car starts, it'll produce about 14 volts from the alternator into the battery and it'll continually charge the system according to what the battery can handle. And the internal voltage regulator within the alternator regulates the voltage and the current output. That does happen in an infinity, but there's an extra situation that's happening through the variable voltage control system, or VVCS. That happens in that the ECM, the computer, the engine control module, receives a signal from the battery current sensor that's attached to the negative lead of your battery post, by the way. That's what that thing is. But it gets that signal, and then it provides a data signal to the IPDD, IPDM, which is the Intelligent Power Distribution Module. That module then, through a wire that connects to the voltage regulator of the alternator, tells the alternator whether it should actually charge the battery or not. So what can happen is, when you're going down the main road uh, without much load, and you say you're driving down the freeway or, or local road, it'll actually, it can tell the alternator to not charge the battery at all. It does that so that it can gain fuel efficiency by not having to spin uh, the alternator with, um, with any resistance or drag on the motor. So that's the idea. It's an intelligent uh, design, but what can happen is if you are around town, uh, maybe you're a stay-at-home mom and you start and stop your car a bunch of times as you're running kids and life and family all around. Or maybe you're, you're a, um, a rideshare person, like a Lyft driver or Uber, and you start and stop your car a lot, but you're not really running it long enough to recharge the battery. Or maybe you got a really awesome stereo system with amplifiers, subwoofers, and, and a, a lot of accessory power drain on your battery. Well, if the IPDM tells the alternator to quit providing power to the battery, then you're going to wind up in a situation that over time the battery goes dead and you'll have to just use a conventional battery charger to recharge the battery. Or, and if you keep dra draining a battery like that over a long time, it can kill batteries. So the situation can be when you start your car, and you put a voltmeter on the battery and you say you get a 14 volts, 14.4 or something like that, a normal appropriate voltage into the battery. That's because the ECM tells the vehicle through the IPDM that on startup it should always provide power to the battery. That's to replenish the energy that you've taken out in, in the starting process. But sometime after that as you get going down the road, if you're not using headlights and other accessories, It'll, the IPDM will tell the alternator to quit providing power to the battery, okay? So if you, if you have a special circumstance where that's causing your battery to not get charged the way it should, you don't need a new alternator in that case. What you need to do is tell the IPDM to not control the alternator. How do you do that? Well, you actually just cut this wire right here. And if you take away that signal, then the alternator will continue to work with its own voltage regulator and it'll charge the battery normally like the, the average car does. Okay, it won't, it'll take away that uh, variable voltage control system. But it doesn't appear to hurt anything else. So, schematic, how do you know what to do? Well, what you're looking for is at the uh, IPDM. I'll show you where that's at in the vehicle, okay? But what you're looking for is you're going to look for connector E13 and it's pin 33. You can see in this diagram, this is the IPDM and it's communicating through this wire to the alternator. This is the alternator here. And then, of course, the alternator communicates up to the battery. Okay. So you can, if you want to disconnect this line, 
that is in fact this same wire right here okay so right at the IPDM you can find this connector E13 at least on my 2016 Infinity QX80 this is an accurate diagram for it okay it's probably accurate for many alt um, it's accurate for many of the other armadas uh, so you find that connector pin 33 and it's a red wire and you can cut it right at the IPDM and and disable it you also could find this connector which is near the um, alternator it's in line connector there's two sides that's why there's a connector E28 and an E226 there and it's pin 2 it'll still be a red wire Here's the information about the connector that's on the IPDM. You see that it is E13, and it shows the layout of this connector. This is looking at the back of the connector from the harness side. That's what that means. And so from where the wires are coming in, like my finger here, into the back of the connector, oh, the second spot in on the bottom is pin 33. That's the wire you're looking for. And that wire, as you see in the table, is going to be a red wire. Incidentally, the other spot that I showed in the diagram, this spot here that shows pin 2 and those two different connectors, well, here's that other connector, that E26. It's an inline connector, two connectors plugged together in this case, and, and on this E26, it's pin 2, which is still a red wire. So if you cut that wire, you'll disable the variable voltage control system and your alternator will function just fine, but it'll work like a normal alternator, meaning it won't get a signal from the ECM telling it to quit charging for the sake of fuel economy. So on your vehicle, passenger side, uh, you can see here's the battery. And this is the cover that I took off of this um, system that's right here. I just pop, snap the cover off. And then this is your IPDM, your module. Now, it's going to be installed in the vehicle, slid down in there. There's a tab, a release tab here, and one on this side, a release tab here. You push those tabs in, and then you can pull up on this to get it to slide out of its place, and it's easier to work on. Um, the tab that's on this side over here, I used, um, actually used my pocket knife, but you could use a screwdriver to get an extra little bit of push, because... Uh, Doing it with fingers is kind of tough. So when you're looking at this module, right down here, this connector right here, this is the E13. It's not labeled E13 anywhere on um, on this uh, this part right here, but there is a a map for this device that identifies this as being the E13. Okay, so I'm saving you the trouble of having to find that map. But this is the connector, and so as you look at it, you see that there is a, to the on the right-hand side, it goes green, red, light green, yellow, and then red with a white trace. And so here is the red second wire in, that's pin 33. If you cut that, and then I put a little, little tape on there just to be sure we're not touching anything else. Inside this box is kind of sealed up and clean. There's no metal to touch on or anything, but it's just a good idea. So the other end of this wire is down here. I put some tape. I taped its end and then taped it back to the harness here. So that's all you got to do. Snip that wire. Now your alternator will work like a normal alternator, and it will just always provide the 14 volts that it needs to charge your battery, and your battery will be much happier. I'll show you what it looks like uh, on the voltage gauge inside. Okay, so when you're in the car... Uh, left side of the dash panel there, you see that that's the um, the voltage gauge right there, right? Little battery symbol means that's the one for volts. I'm going to start the vehicle. It takes just a minute, and then there it goes. You see how the needle is slightly above that center mark, right? There's the, there's the mark down there at 8, which would be 8 volts, and that's low. Then there's the middle mark just below my uh, gauge needle. Uh, that would be indicating 14 volts, all right? That's good charging voltage. So when you're looking at your gauge, before you make any of these changes, uh, if you want to convince yourself or maybe discern whether or not this is something that is going to work for you, watch that gauge. 
if that needle is below that center mark, that's actually going to be 12 volts. Okay, so going down the road at, at 11.9 or 12.0 or 12.3, that's just normal operating voltage with a load on the battery. That means it's not putting anything in there that you need. And so if you see that needle below your line, um, then you'll know that you're just getting that 12 volt scenario and you're really not adding anything to your battery. But if you make this mod, cut that wire, you'll see that it outputs 14 volts all the time that the engine is running. And so it'll be constantly uh, wanting to charge your battery like what a normal uh, car alternator battery system would do. Okay, that's the information I have to share on that. Thanks a bunch uh, for watching. Hope this helps you to not have to go spend hundreds on a new alternator if you think that there's a problem because that's where I was at. I thought I was going to have to spend about 200 bucks on an on a alternator and a bunch of hassle swapping it out and turns out it's actually nothing wrong with the battery or the alternator. It's just this system is um, not working for our situation the way we use the vehicle.